In this video, I like to talk about continuous features because in a previous video where we covered a complete uh, project with Spark MLlib, um, I just one hot encoded the vectors basically when I was doing the pre-processing and what we didn't do was actually do some uh, standardization on the features that were continuous. Now, the reason why I didn't do that is because our features were in the same uh, range, therefore basically in the same scale. So I didn't really need to scale those features. But I think it's super important for you to understand how you can scale uh, continuous features because many algorithms require you to do so. And for that reason, in this video, we're going to cover that. Uh, the reason why we want to scale the features is because let's take an example, let's take uh, two features, let's say age and, um, and height, right? If we would want to input these two features into a machine learning algorithm, into some machine learning algorithms, of course, um, basically the, the difference in variations between these two will actually impact the result of the, um, of the model because think about it, if, if age differs, right, the variations uh, from one record to another uh, differ in age uh, relative to, uh, to the differences in, uh, in height, you can see that uh, we will have a, a different absolute level for those, okay? So that's why we need to, to make sure that we bring both features into the same scale. Otherwise, the, the machine learning model will actually be impacted by those changes, okay? So let's go ahead and, uh, and work through also the previous example. I'm gonna actually put a link down below to the previous video that, uh, that I made so that you can also reference that in case I go through too fast through certain steps, okay? So let's go ahead. What we're doing here, we're just creating the Spark session and we're lo loading a financial, uh, synthetic financial data set. Again, all of these steps are also shown in the, um, in the previous video about the full data science project with Spark MLlib. And we're splitting the train set. We're splitting the data into a train and test set. So here we're checking for the data types and we're getting the numerical columns and the categorical columns. And as you can see, we have amount, old balance and new balance as numerical columns, all right? And if we would actually look at the data, let's see it. As you can see, we have the amount, old balance and new balance or uh, origin original, something like that. So as I was saying earlier, the reason why we didn't do that in the previous video is because uh, old balance and new balance were basically in the same scale. But if we look at amount, the amount also is in the same scale because it refers to, uh, to money in, in this scenario. So therefore, we didn't need to scale the data in, in the previous video. But just so that you can understand how you can actually do that. For example, if uh, instead of amount, we would have had age, as I was mentioning earlier, then it would have been a problem and we needed to scale the data so that everything is in the same range, all right? So the first way in which we can scale the data is to use standard scalar. And this uh, standard scalar, what it does, it actually standardizes a set of features to have a zero mean and the standard deviation of one, all right? So we're going to first import a vector assembly and standard scalar, and we're going to assemble uh, the vector, right? We're going to put all of those numerical columns into a vector called SS features. Now, if you don't know exactly why we need to actually assemble the vector, I encourage you to visit uh, my previous video in which I dive into more depth when it comes to uh, vector assembler and how you can actually use it. 
So I'm going to put a link down in the description and you can definitely check that video out. So now that we actually assembled the vector, we're going to, uh, we're going to transform the train set. And now let's check to see our features that we created. Okay, so this is an assembled vector that, is, that consists of all the features that, uh, and that we, were, that we uh, brought together into a single vector. If we would just look at the whole data frame, we can see that we have all of these original features. And then what we did, we created a vector uh, that contains all of them. As you can see, we have amount, old balance, and new balance. And you can see here as well, we have the amount, old balance, and new balance. If we want to actually show the full, uh, the, the full feature, we can just use truncate, and we pass false. And now you can actually see it in a better, in a better way. So you can see we have the same features in this uh, SS feature column as a vector. All right. So what the standard scalar does, it actually takes those features in the SS feature column, and then it outputs them to a scaled uh, column. Okay, so we're doing this. And now what we need to do, we need to fit uh, the data and then as well transform it. Okay, so standard scalar requires you to first to fit the data and then transform it. So if we do this and let's see the data, as you can see, it created a scaled feature, uh, a scaled feature in which that consists of, of the vectors uh, being scaled to have a mean of zero and, and the standard deviation of one. Let's uh, just select the feature scaled. Right. And then let's also show it like that because it's uh, a better representation as you can see these are the scaled features now another way in which we can bring the data into the same range uh, is to actually use the min max scalar and what uh, min max scalar does is to scale the values to a range to a scale between a given minimum value and a maximum value so if you specify the minimum to be zero and one and the maximum to be one, then the data will be scaled between these two values. You can also specify different, uh, different ranges. You can just specify from uh, 100 to 1000 or, or, or other values, but uh, the defaults for the min max scalar are zero and one. And let's go ahead and see how we can actually implement that. We're going to import the min max scalar and we already have the, the vector containing all the features that we want to scale. So therefore, let's just see it again. This is the SS features. And if we want to use the min max scalar, all we need to do is pass in the input column and then the output column. Of course, as I was mentioning earlier, we can pass other arguments. We can pass the minimum and the maximum. But as you can see, we have the default set to zero and one and usually uh, we want to scale the data to these default values anyway. So let's run this. And the minimum and uh, the min max scalar does the same, right? It requires you to fit the data and then it requires you to transform the data exactly as a standard scalar requires you to do as well. If we go ahead and we do that and we select the scale feature, you can see that the scale is between, is between zero and one. So these two are the main ways in which you can actually scale and normalize the data to actually use it with your machine learning model. Again, there are certain machine learning models that don't require you to do this. And also, if you have the data in the same range, you don't necessarily need to do this. But the best practice is to standardize the data just because many times you have a whole bunch of features and definitely will have different ranges. In, in this example was a pretty standard one, but nevertheless, make sure that you keep in mind that you have to standardize data uh, or normalize it, of course, uh, uh, depending on the situation, okay? Before I go, I just wanna thank you guys for liking this video and subscribing to our channel because we really, really want to 
do the best videos for you to actually understand practical ways in which you can uh, leverage machine learning in your real uh, data science projects. So thank you and I'll see you in the next video.